Hi everyone, welcome back to another Simple Planes video. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a basic fuselage and cockpit with the new fuselage slicing feature introduced in the 1.11 update. So, let's get started. So what I mean by a basic fuselage is not this interior, but just not really using a slicing for the main fuselage. I'm just going to show you how to make a somewhat realistic basic cockpit, which is actually pretty easy. And it's going to look something like this. You can see why. You can see before I took it apart, it was very smooth because everything is actually just a few parts here. It's not paneled where everything sort of meets, but doesn't. Anyway, so step one, make a new plane. Or you can start on your own plane or something. Right, so this is the base, and first thing I want to do is get either a fuselage block or the new hull fuselage, which is not really new at this point, but you want to get one of these two out. I'm going to use the hull fuselage, however you can use the main fuselage for the rest of the plane if you'd like. Most of my planes are fictional, and I like it that way because it means you don't have to worry about following a blueprint. So I'm just going to make a sort of airline fuselage that's not really based off anything. We'll make it about that big, about that long, and I think the main fuselage where it's not changing in size is going to be about this long. Now for the tail, what we want to do is to first of all make, for the beginning of this, of the, whatever you call it, the small, I'm not sure what to call it, I want it to be sort of relatively long, so maybe six length or something. A slight rise, so it's slightly rising up. And then I go into the orth orthographic side view. It's pretty simple, just this here, then this one here. And then I make sure the top of the fuselage is straight. It doesn't have to be straight, it can be slightly sloping down, but you don't really want it sloping upwards. Now you could use three sections, not just one and two, to make a better curve, I'm not sure what to call it. I'm actually gonna do that a bit. So it just means that there's less sharp corners and just so there's more angles. No. So there's more sides, I guess. I'm not sure what to call this. It's basically more sections for more precise smoothing. So just do this and I find that I make them slightly shorter and the bias slowly increases. Or I just have them shorter and the bias stays the same. Or the other way around where the bias increase and the lengths don't change. One thing you could do if you'd like is to, at the very end, make this top bit sm start to angle down too. But at the very end we have like one or two sections. And just like that we have a sort of realistic fuselage. Note that it is not the right shape from, look at it from the top down, just from the side. Also before I continue this I also want to mention be sure to turn the smoothing on, because that smooths out all these like cuts in here. Like this. This is much better. Very smooth, no cuts. So from the side it looks good, but from the top, absolutely nothing. The first thing I want to do is mostly have the sides match the height. So the width matches the height. So what I'm also going to do is have width is just less than the height. I, of I often find that I use more precise numbers, so I don't just use the buttons here. And there we go. And I probably would change that tail a bit, which I can do right now. Just increase the height a bit. And probably increase the rise to something like maybe three. So there we go. Pretty simple tail. And it's only 12 parts. Now for the cockpit. I think I'm going to start the cockpit right here, so I'm not going to add more fuselages. What I want for the cockpit is to start off with probably two or less lengths. So I'm going to have a few of those. And then as we get close to the main part of the cockpit, we want to decrease the length of those lengths. And again, what I'm going to do, like I did with the tail, is going to start with the height. So I'm going to look at it from the side in orthographic view. And then I'm going to just adjust the height, ignoring the width. This is the last intersection between the long and short lengths. And then we go forward one. And then we start playing around with it here. So this is where it gets really precise. 
and the buttons are not going to cut it, so we have to always enter in, not always, but we have to mostly enter in precise numbers. So I think for this, maybe 4.9 or even 4.95 will do. And then I have, let's just have a look at a quick rise. Now it has this weird texture issue, so I'm going to leave it at just that. But even that's a little too much, so I'm going to start it at just 3, so it's really precise here. Now, for the part where the cockpit windows are, where the cockpit really starts to, if you look at it just from a, an outline, starts to really slope down, what I do is I just decrease the height by a lot, and then I play around with the rise until I get something I like. That just doesn't look right. So then what I do is I then realize that it's too far back to start the windows, so I then I can keep. So what we want this profile to be is like, sort of like this. So the windows are going to be actually around here somewhere. So this is definitely the profile I was going for. I find a lot of my planes look like the Boeing 787 Dreamliner in some way, where the nose just, just like the this black line pattern here slopes down just like the nose. I'm not sure why that is, just probably my style. So this method is not the best for building good replicas, we have the uh, angled windows. However, for like a, a just a, a simple build that looks nice and is smooth, for like 24 parts. Actually, the SWL 10's main fuselage was 10, 20 parts, and that included probably a tail too. Anyway, so you have the nose, and then you find in the nose you have really short sections, with very precise. So I never actually use the fuselage and nose part. I just use shorter and shorter fuselage lengths, and then precise measurements. And there we go, I could probably have made this nose a little rounder. So from the side looks great, but from the top, we need some work. What, it's, what I do here is I don't just follow the height. Oh, I do in the beginning, but it's very different from that. So I want to make the width slightly less than the height again. So 1, 0 0.9, 1.75, So just a little lower than the height. So there we go, and I think this is just about ready for Windows. Actually, I think it is ready. I haven't even saved this yet. So what we want to do here for this fuselage, this is where the fuselage slicing feature comes in. So what we do is we make a copy of this fuselage here, like the bit where the Windows are, and then the one behind it. And then we use our Connections tool, which is Rotate, this Connections icon. And then we select the fuselage in front of it, this one here, and we disconnect that. Then we go to the previous fuselage from here, and then just do select the one behind that. We go into orthographic side view, we go to edit fuselage shape, and then we go just to the front of the two part section, we go to, we go to advanced, and then we play around with the top fill. For the front, I don't actually need to change anything for here. For the back, we want to try and make it so it makes a perfect straight line from the front to the back. Using lots of n numbers you can get it precise, I'm just going to make it sort of precise, a little rough just for the purposes of this tutorial because if we can modify the fine numbers yourself on your own plane to make a better fuselage, but I'm just making a tutorial here, I'm not going to spend two hours on this. It looks about right, so we're done with this bottom section. And it's pretty easy to add a floor in here and get in, add the inter cockpit interior. That this is not the, what this tutorial is about, just the basic fuselage. And then this is where our clones come in. We're actually going to have three copies of each of these two fuselages. Well, actually, a few more if you want to have some support in between windows, like you would with, let's say, window panels. For example, the Boeing 787 Dreamliner has four window panels, of which there are three supports. I'm not sure what they're actually called. One here and one here and here. The SWL 10 and the SWL 20 both have at least one support. I'm not going to show you how to do that because it's just more fuselage slicing. So we get our copies. I'm going to start with this back one, I mean front one. We select this front part here. We go into overload. In position, we're going to copy our position. We go to the other copy. We make this position the same as the other one. 
then what we do is we nudge it up. We could also go ahead and add the other one in here so we can easily just modify two at once. We nudge it back down. We go into orthographic view. And I was going to make the glass, but I'm going to make the, the roof section first. So we go to use the bottom fill section. We drag that until we have a, what looks like a good roof, about that much. And then we change the bottom fill again for these ones. Now here's where it gets interesting. Now, if we select the bottom fill to be absolutely zero, we still have this large support thing here. We don't want that. Now, you can't get this outside of its parameters, which is either 100% or 0%. But in overload, part fuselage, we're going to change this to fuselage. Fill front, note this here is zero. That's this bottom fill here. I'm going to just type in negative two. This is the result. So we can actually, well, it just says zero here. We can set it to be negative and therefore we can make some interesting shapes. Or in our case, make a nice fuselage slicing nose with like 10 parts. So negative two is too much. I'm gonna try 1.5. Still too much. Let's try, let's just see 0 0.7. Getting there. So it always takes some playing around with the numbers to get the right parameters. And the goal is to have, basically think of it like a rectangle has been cut out of the side view like this so we want this to be try and be a full rectangle and not a full rectangle but we want th these this corner here here and here to be right angles and we can see this is a slightly not straight line but it doesn't really matter that's about right and then we're going to leave that as is now we get the final copy now we want this to actually be a glass hollow fuselage not a full hollow fuselage so we can just we can either drag out a glass hollow fuselage from the parts list and modify that, or we can go into here and change the part type to fuselage glass two. When we click enter, we can see that it is now the hollow fuselage of glass, which is the same as the hollow glass fuselage as dragged out from the parts list. We're going to do the same for the front section, and we again copy and paste the position. That way the parts are in exactly the right position for our purposes. Now there are two options for what you can do here. You can either just leave it as is, covering the whole front section. And I guess you could do that, but I want to make it fit with the rest of the nose. We're going to fuselage slice this. Luckily, since we didn't use any precise numbers, we can just use the basic sliders. Top fill, that's it. Bottom fill, about there. Now this is not actually 100%, it is just below that, 97, bottom fill, about that much. Now for the front, bottom fill can be 0, and the top fill in this case can simply be 1 or 100%. However, sometimes you're making a plane that, that's different and actually has a smaller window in comparison to the nose. For example, the SWL. 120. What you'll find you have to do, oh, it's like I can't find a single plane that, that did it, but you have to modify the XML to be greater than 1. For example, in here, I didn't do that because I didn't have to, but you might have to change this here to be something like, say, 2. And the result, if we go over here, is the same, but well, you'll find we have some interesting geometry if we increase this, so, yeah, weird. Not sure what I was trying to do, but but you might have to modify the XML for the fill percentage to be greater than 1. Uh, anyway, so here's our nose, and, and actually, I, I guess this isn't fully the right way, I'm not sure what to say here, but you can see that the front glass fuselage is just not f full like I'm not sure how to I'm not sure what to say here so what we do is we we just grab the amount we decreased it by so neg the amount of the negative go into a glass fuselage fill front 
0.475 and the result as you can see is a fuselage glass hollow what is it called that is smooth with the roof and there we go it's the basic fuselage part of this plane is pretty much done one last thing before we go is we need to fix the connections here what we do is we just use the connection tool and add the connections because we want the smoothing to work we want to add the connections to the right parts the roof and bottom parts need to be connected to the parts that are I find all behind of them for the glass we want to add something so I'm just going to say do the same with the back like this and there we go we now have a pretty basic plane which is a whopping 26 parts 24 actually because we have this base in the cockpit and there we go so in the next video of this series I guess I will show you something about this plane I'm pretty sure it will be a wing tutorial on how to make well it will be like a learning thing for me and for you about how to make custom airfoils for wings because I why I keep pressing the wrong keys what was I going to say Right, because the SWR120's wings are in fact mod parts. Where? Wait, this is the SWR170. 70. I'm not sure if I showed this before. I might finish this, I'm not sure. However, it employs the custom airfoil using stock parts technique, using fuselage slicing. This is a realistic airfoil, it's not just a single fuselage part. Just three parts here. Well, three parts, ignoring control surfaces and other stuff you add to the wing. So I'm going to show you how to make this there foil on the wings of this plane. That's going to be in the next video. And I will link this plane in the video description. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!